Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to today's airsofting video. As you can see, got quite the beard going on here. Um, so I don't really grow it out often, but I just really noticed in the camera how great big bushy beard it is. Anyway, um, today what I'm going to talk about is um, another airsoft review. So this is actually one that I wanted to do for a, a little bit now, but just haven't had a chance to get to it. Um, it was part of my unboxing uh, a few months back, um, and it is actually about the drum mag. So um, this is the Matrix Steel Drum Mag by SEMA. Now, with this, it was briefly mentioned and seen in my RPK review slash shooting demonstration. So I actually wanted to just do a, a review strictly on the drum mag itself and compatibility. So obviously I'll, I'll compare it to which models it'll fit. I do have two SEMA AKs that I am going to test fit this on just so you guys get an idea. But really this thing is pretty friendly with a lot of the SEMA AK models. Um, which again, I'm going to show you. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. I'll get more into this um, as we go. So let's get into it. All right. So when we're looking at this thing up close, um, you can kind of tell that the build quality is very well done on this on the exterior. That is for sure. So this is in fact steel, like I mentioned in the introduction of the video. So again, that's already satisfying as is that the manufacturer decided to go with steel build on this so again that it's durable in case you bump it scratch it the dropping is still kind of up in the air and i'll kind of get to why that's still something you want to avoid with this drum mag but overall the build is very very well done um, again every little bit of this thing is pretty much made of metal um, I think with the exception of the top here, um, it is, from what I understand and what it looks like, is plastic. So, um, aside from that, everything is steel construction, and here, of course, is the backside. So, I apologize for the uh, noise. It is full of BBs, um, more so just to show you the inside. So, exterior-wise, there's not a lot going on. You do have the button itself to feed the BBs, so they feed into the gun. Um, as far as this centerpiece, um, to be quite honest with you, I'm not why I'm not sure what it really does. It does swivel around, but it's kind of a a tight swivel. And it may have to do with something with this piece, as this is what needs to come off to remove the back end. So um, that's something that I'll show you in just a moment. So let's say it's time to feed the thing. Um, we're gonna fill it up with BBs. We need to figure out how to take the cap off. So obviously this thing is already full, so really just showing how to remove the uh, back cover. So this center piece is actually like a giant, uh, like a giant bolt really that you need to unscrew which again it's very loose to the point where you can use your fingers you don't need any special tools or anything like that so um, we'll go ahead and unscrew it and here's what that little cap looks like it is also made of metal too so it's got some weight to it so that's really all you need to do then the top cover just pops right off nothing really too special it's nice and glossy on the inside with a matte finish on the outside just like the rest of the magazine so these are just my test BBs these are not really ones I would use but again just to give you some perspective of how it looks like when you fill it up so um, when we get into this again the construction is somewhat intricate towards the bottom here so here we have the actual motor, um, which again, if you remember on the front of this, it has the button to wind that motor, to wind the gears, to pretty much feed the BBs through the top to feed into the gun. Um, that's pretty much on the back end here, what's going on when you're pressing the button. So you can kind of see the chamber starts here where it feeds in, and this gear is pushing the BBs pretty much into that feeder tube that you can kind of see sticking out um, from the top here. So I'll try to just dig it out a little bit but you can see here is that tube and um, pretty much what happens too I've noticed as this reservoir starts draining let's say you're going just full auto like crazy on your um, AK or RPK or whatever it is you're using this portion right here it's plastic and you can see it's spring loaded so it actually starts closing to the right as the BB reservoir gets smaller reason for that is is it pretty much starts pushing the pile of BBs towards this side since the feeder 
is going down in this direction. So again, very interesting design. Um, I like that it works that way. And then from there, once it's time to fill it up again, you just bring this piece all the way back and it locks. And then from here, that's when you can fill this top portion. So of course, half of the um, compartment needs to be for the motor. So it's only the top portion of the drum mag that actually is going to have any BBs in it. So um, just an FYI there, it's not a full drum mag. Obviously, you need to sacrifice space for a motor. Now, as far as power goes, you can see there's this little compartment here, which actually comes out. Um, be very, very careful because the gauge on these wires is super duper thin. And um, you can easily tear something if you pull something abruptly or do anything for that matter. So just kind of word of advice here, if you do put in new batteries or have to do anything in here, be extremely careful with these wires. So um, here's the box that houses the batteries. So it houses three AA batteries. Um, the way to get in here is um, by taking the screw out here and then the cover slides out and then you can put in your three batteries and then put it on and put the screw in. So pretty self-explanatory, not really gonna go through that process of it. But once we have the batteries, then you're presented with an on-off switch. So this is something that you'll have to turn on or off manually. So meaning you do need to take the cover off each time. So typically when I'm not using it, of course, I do flip it on the off switch so the battery isn't constantly working and then corroding um, over time if you do leave it on. So um, again, I would just advise that if you don't use it often, turn it off. Um, and especially too, if you plan on putting it away for storage for a few months, make sure you take the batteries out completely. Because again, for these kind of um, these kind of airsoft devices that have batteries in them, like double or triple A, if you have them in the gun or in any mechanism for a long period of time, it just corrodes away the inside and makes it look, you know, just a mess. So, again, just some word of advice there, but. Right now, we'll go ahead and put it on the on position so you kind of get an idea of how this thing feeds. So I put it in the on position. You're going to also notice that in the bottom um, where the re where the uh, battery pack was sitting, there's actually a specific spot for it to stay in place. So um, I'm going to literally just put it back in that spot. And then you can see it, it sits pretty snug in there, so it's not going to be rattling around. And especially given the gauge of the wire, that's not something you want uh, to happen here. So um, pretty much that's how it'll look like. Again, you can see that you can really fill this reservoir, I mean, up to where my finger is. I mean, I have a ton of space still for more BBs to add. All right, so I have my finger on the button. Battery pack is on, so I'll um, go ahead and just run a quick line of BBs through. You're gonna hear the motor making the noise, and you're gonna you're gonna hear the BBs pretty much getting fed. Now, the thing with this is, as it starts getting fuller, you can tell by the noise that this makes um, that you know it's pretty much telling you, okay, it's at the point where this tube is full, so don't keep pressing it. So you want to really be careful there. Um, as to not overfeed and damage the mechanism. So I'll press and hold the button right now. Um, why is it not working? Hmm. Well, let me see what's going on because it is not functioning for some reason. Alrighty, sorry about that. I had to check the batteries. Um, they're fairly new, so I don't know what was going on. Um, I had to dump the BBs out just to investigate a little further in there. Um, but it looks like everything should be okay. So really what happens is I have it on right now and I'll press the button. And you can basically see that, um, I guess to, to the best of my visual here, the BBs basically feed into this little chamber there. And then again, you would hold the button down until you feel that it's pretty much good to go. And then obviously at the top you should see BBs. But again, I don't have any in here, so that's why we're not seeing anything. So, um, and, and this is kind of a good thing that I took the BBs out so you can see the spring-loaded thing that I was talking about. So you see how it basically swivels left to right. So once um, you continue to use this thing, it should eventually swivel over, but... I don't know why it's not doing it now, probably because there really isn't any BBs to uh, to use, but um, again, you kind of saw it. I moved it basically from here down, um, 
and again. That's that's pretty much the uh, the function of this. Um, it is quite efficient and very awesome because, um, especially with my RPK, when you're basically shooting full auto, sometimes you could even have your finger pressed down on the button the whole time and keep firing. It's pretty it's pretty epic. Um, but again, you can see the the again that wire. It's very thin. The gauge is just really flimsy and cheap. It snakes right beneath into the battery pack here. Um, but I would say um, that's the one nitpicky thing I have with this is just the build quality um, on the inside. So it's not the greatest. Um, the wires definitely are cheap. Now the big thing is a lot of people have is when they drop it. When they drop it, um, let's say on like a hard surface, I mean this thing could probably break. Because again, remember how sensitive everything is inside. So if you do drop it on concrete for whatever reason, it's probably going to be good riddance to it, unfortunately. My worry was, when it didn't turn on just now, was because I did have this thing fall twice on a carpeted floor. Um, pretty, pretty high distance, about six feet, because it is on my wall. It actually ended up falling off one of my hangers um, that I have on my gun wall. So I actually thought that it broke just now, and I was really worried until I just checked it, tapped the batteries a few times, and as you can see, everything works. So thankfully, nothing happened there, but I was a little worried. But again, FYI, make sure you're extremely careful with this thing when you do use it in Airsoft. Otherwise, if you accidentally drop it, you know, there is a strong possibility these inside components could get damaged and... Um, pretty much everything can cease to function. Alrighty, so I got my BBs back in. Now putting the cover back on is literally as simple as putting it back. Uh, make sure all the wires again are tucked in before you do screw this in. Because like I said, look how close this red wire gets to the edge. You don't want to pinch it when you're putting the cover back on. So again, just kind of some um, advice for the day for that portion of it. And then really, you just screw this back on. Don't over tighten it, but tighten it to where it's you know pretty snug and you are good to go. I disconnected the battery so as you can see it's not working anymore. Um, so you always want to do that again if you're not going to use it. So next I'm going to show you guys just a quick compatibility test with my two SEMA AKs. Alrighty so my first AK that I will test this out on is the SEMA CM048 electric blowback um, AK47. So with this AK the magwell is literally the same exact fitment for this magazine. So therefore, the CM048 SEMA AK-47 will fit this drum mag, as we'll test here. Just have to wait for it to click in, there we go. And again, you can see that everything fits. There is absolutely zero wobble to this. I mean, you can see I'm gonna just kind of like literally, this is just me forcing the gun itself. So um, if you needed to, and if you wanted to, if you're an AK-47 person, <clears throat> you can definitely rock the Matrix SEMA drum magazine with this. Um, again, I don't know if I mentioned this, probably something I should have mentioned before, the drum mag capacity on this is 2,500 rounds. Um, so especially for a AEG like this, where you're gonna be having a high rate of fire, it doesn't hurt to have a drum mag. So again, it goes in and comes out with these. Very snug. That's what I love with this one is very, very snug. I can't say that's the same, unfortunately, for my SEMA RPK. There is a little bit of play. So that's my, my second AK variant that I did want to show you guys as well. So <clears throat> this is the CM052 um, RPK. So again, same manufacturer. So I'm going to take out the magazine. This one is the original factory magazine that comes with the gun. So as you guys have probably seen, um, or if you have not seen, I did do a review video with the RPK and the drum mag. But again, I didn't cover the drum mag in great detail like I am in this video. But here is fitment for the RPK with the drum mag. Again, it, it is um, pretty solid of a click, but look at this. You do have some play here. But... This isn't going to affect anything in terms of the mag just falling out on its own. I mean, I'm pulling on this very hard, and it is very snug in here. It's just the side-to-side -side wobble, which is, for some people, maybe a deal-breaker. But honestly, there's an easy fix to this, which um, I have yet to do. You can actually put electrical tape on the sides of this magazine, so then it will sit flush 
with the RPK. So the side to side thing isn't gonna happen much. Obviously, if you have electrical tape on this and you wanna throw it on a CM0488K, you may wanna take the electrical tape off because that one is extremely snug fit, um, but this one is the one that has a little bit of play where you wanna make sure you maybe do put something, but you can see that you know, no matter what, it still stays in there. It feeds the BBs just fine, but you just get this play if you do move side to side. Um, again, not a deal breaker. Maybe for some it is, but again, there's a simple fix to this. You sometimes have to be creative because, again, these are airsoft replicas. They're not always going to fit to the T, but again, some things you can make fit. You just have to get a little creative. So, um, again, here's the RPK. Again, the removal and insertion of the magazine. Very simple, nothing chaotic or anything. Again, just the side-to-side -side wobbles. Alrighty, well, I think that summarizes really just a basic review of this Matrix Drum Mag by SEMA. So, again, we discussed that the quality for the exterior build is very well done. Um, again, it is steel design, steel construction, very well done. However, the internals are unfortunately lacking in that same exterior appearance. Uh, the interior again a lot of plastic components, a lot of flimsy low gauge wiring, um, very susceptible to ripping or tearing if you do you know accidentally move that battery pack a little too viciously for whatever reason it can happen. I've been victim of these flimsy wires on previous airsoft gun models before. It's easy to solder it together but again it's just something that is very unnecessary to happen. Um, and the big one again be careful, make sure not to drop this thing. Again, it's very sensitive on the inside. That's the part that really counts. Um, if you do drop it on concrete or a really hard floor, literally if you're standing, I'm, like, I'm about six foot one. So for me, if I drop it, it's gonna be a pretty nasty fall. It's, it's gonna be at least four, four feet for sure um, of travel distance from you know top to bottom. So that, that can do some damage here. Um, so again, just my, my word of advice for you guys when you do purchase this, when you are airsofting, just um, have a little extra attention to it. But aside from that, guys, that is all I had for you today for this review. Feel free to ask me any questions. Um, like I said, this should be fairly compatible with a lot of the SEMA AKs that are out in the market. Um, again, since we kind of just tested two, I, I don't know 100% you know, to answer your question on every SEMA model that you asked me about. But I know on Evike's website, which is where I purchased this, it does tell you that this fits most AK variants. So again, just something to think about. And um, if anything, I can try to do research for you if you do comment and ask me if it fits a different type of SEMA AK. I'll take a look. I'll see what I can find and let you know. But again, thanks so much for watching, guys. You have a good day.